morning. Today we're going to be discussing Ox Herding Pictures Part 2. Last Sunday, we began to learn about the Zen Ox Herding Pictures, of which we have six hanging here in the, in the Zendo. And I mentioned um, that in, in addition to the six, traditionally, we often see them in a group of 10. And the additional ones I showed you last week, one through three, uh, were developed by the Chinese, uh, 12th century Chinese Zen master, Kuo An, or uh, we call him Kap Kuan in uh, Japanese. But today I wanted to add some additional information, actually, about the six that we have here hanging in our, in our Zendo. When Grace Shearson, uh, my root teacher, and that of others uh, in, our, in our Sangha, when she was studying women ancestors, she had read a book titled Waste Paper Record by Tachibana no Someko, who lived in mid to late uh, 17th century Japan. And she was a concubine of a Japanese feudal lord, warlord, um, and at the time, after several of her young children died, she fell into a deep depression. But it's said that she was lifted up out of that depression through her deep koan study, the study of sort of enigmatic puzzles in, in Zen. And th at that time, she experienced a verified awakening. And after that, she wrote the book, Waste Paper Record, about her awakening experiences. So when Grace was reading her book, she noticed that there were no images for any of the commentaries of the six ox herding pictures, which were included in the text, <clears throat> in, the, in the text she wrote. And Grace was really interested in adding pictures to enrich the translation and the possible publication of this story. However, she found no images anywhere, including in Japan. So she commissioned the artist Michael Hoffman to paint a series based on the descriptions in the waste paper record. And through their collaborations, Grace and uh, Mr. Hoffman, they discovered that there had been as yet no female ox herders depicted in the almost 1,000 year history of the ox herding tradition. And it is these three, sorry, these six images that hang here in our Zendo, the result of that project. So we feel very lucky. But before we begin looking closely at these, let's be reminded of the three that preceded them, which we saw last Sunday. So Kate, can you just show Ox Herder one through three, please? Um, so that's the Zendo one. Can you show the ox herder, the one that has them on a diagonal there um, at the bottom there? Yeah, there, thanks, Kate. And then the rest of those will be in, in order, Kate. So these are the three that we, we looked at. And these ox herding pictures, of course, uh, bring alive our spiritual path, providing a nonlinear roadmap of our experiences. And it's important to remember as I know you have all experienced, the road is one that loops back and forth on itself. It's not at all a straight line. And just like the ox herder, they depict our own quest of discovery and then perhaps subduing the ox and finally training the wild ox, symbolic of our own heart and mind. The ox represents awakening. And the herder is us, the meditator, encountering the sometimes very difficult reality and the challenges of our own spiritual practice. So as you look at these, you recognize in the top left corner what is called searching for the ox, followed by finding traces of the ox. And you can see the footprints off to the bottom left there. And lastly, at the bottom right, seeing the ox at least part of the ox. So we begin a journey of examining ourselves and eventually seeing the relationship of our practice 
and our lives through these traces of awakening, and finally having brief moments of awakening of the true nature of the self. And what might follow for us in our practice next is represented in image four, which is the first of our Zendo pictures. So Zendo number one, that's right. Thank you, Kate. So this is the first one we have here in the Zendo. I'll just leave it there for a moment. You can look at it. Let yourself feel what it represents for you what it represents for your path. And I'll share with you the poem that Tachibana no Someko included in the waste paper record. Of this picture, she had written, one spot of white hair, the mind of faith comes to life. Someday, holy, enlightenment. Simply extinguish the profane mind. And yes, this picture is entitled Catching the Ox. Expressed another way, throughout extraordinary effort, you seize the ox. But still its will is uh, very forceful and its body is spirited. And sometimes it runs high into the mountains, and other times it disappears in the mist. Thank you, Kate. So we have what we might call a rudimentary understanding of the true nature of self. We may discover that seeing the ox is something quite different, though, from taking hold of the ox. We may glimpse our true nature, our connectedness to all things. And at the same time, we experience the tenacity of our ego and of our conditioned habits. We begin to experience just how difficult it is to tame this darn ox, to tame our monkey minds, to see and subdue our ego, or at least to see it more clearly. You know, I can't recall exactly the situation, the where, the, why, or the when, or the who, of when I first saw and heard about the ox herding pictures. Um, it was probably over a dozen years ago when I was studying with Grace. But in on first seeing this image, I felt, I really felt the power of the duality of our lives. The push and the pull. The aversion. And then the greed. And what came to mind when I was writing this down was Grace's acronym, WITBO, wishing it to be otherwise, the push and the pull. And I could see and feel so much in this picture of the female ox herder pulling with all her might to get things, in this case the ox, to go her way. This is how I first reacted to it. And you too, no doubt, have had these struggles trying to get your pet, dog, horse, to do what you want them to do, or your partner for that matter, and being faced with a forceful will against which we hadn't enough power to prevail, really. I think maybe I've been attached a bit to this image since the first time I saw it, because this is where I feel I've spent a lot of time in my practice. I might say that at this particular curve on this windy road of our journey, I kind of had a standing reservation at the end right there. I've hung out there a lot. And this place we recognize, a place that is familiar in Zazen, it's familiar to us when, us when we're on our meditation cushions. When we see and feel this back and forth of awakening to the reality of our lives, of who we are, of how simple and grand a feeling that is, and then in the next breath, perhaps, recognizing the shadow and then the full force of our conditioning, the power of the ego mind. This is a familiar part of our practice, 
of discerning light while recognizing clouds. And so our practice then becomes one of focus on letting go of this conditioning in view of this clarity that we've started to have. What John Lurie, Dato, Dato Lurie calls actualization of our insight. And he writes that this continues on forever. Realization followed by actualization. Insight becoming action. And then we continue to move along. Or maybe we loop back to the other stages. But next in our pictures, and if you can show us number two, Zendo number two, Kate. And take a look at this one. Now I do mention that in our pictures, white, first the white at the top of the head of the bull, now the entire head, is significant, representing our awakening. And this is what Tachibana Nosomeko actually included in her book about this particular stage. She wrote, joy, joy, the head is white. Insight springs forth for the first time. Liberation is not yet attained. In a moment, captivated by delusion. When I was first studying the image of catching the ox, as I explained above, it felt like an expression of struggle. And this image, we are taming the ox. The struggle has eased, not by pulling nor pushing, but rather by finding the middle way. And the middle way, too, is fleeting. Thank you, Kate. For myself, I began to really feel my feet on this part of the road. And then it was gone, just like that. And it's like this. And our practice, Sazen, hones our ability to sit through both of these. Like, you know, toning a muscle. We become better able to ride the ups and downs. And this is the poem that John Dido shared in his book, which gives us another perspective. The whip and tether cannot be put aside or the ox may wander into mud-filled swamps. When patiently trained to trust, it becomes gentle and can be unfettered. Then freely, it follows your way. Perhaps you recognize this part of your journey too. We have more clarity, but our deeply rooted conditioning is a consistent companion Realization moves toward actualization. Our everyday lives serve as constant and boundless opportunities to act in more harmonious, compassionate ways. We may find that sitting zazen, sitting meditation, is less of a struggle. It starts to feel vital to our lives, perhaps. And we find we have great diligence. And just look at us here and our commitments to being here on Sundays. We continue our self-examination that is illuminated in practice. But we mustn't forget there is still a nose ring on the bowl. So things feel as if they are coming together. We begin to trust ourselves and we begin to trust the practice. And the honesty we bring to it also recognizes the need to not be deluded in thinking we can let go of the rope. The ox is not fully trained. But now, we and our ox, we can walk together, side by side, without either of us fleeing. And these two images together, to me, the two we're working with today, are such beautiful renderings of our spiritual journeys, at least a part of it. Recognizing the self, the ego, and our patterns, our triggers, 
quite simply, colors our entire life. We begin to see so much more clearly how the illusion of self is intertwined and so wrapped up in every aspect of our lives. We begin to notice when we mindlessly push for doing things only our way, or how we get annoyed when others don't do things our way. Our dualistic thinking, this or that, seems to appear everywhere. It's a lot to bear witness to, frankly. And it takes patience and diligence to stay with it, to not turn away. It takes a real commitment to look at ourselves over and over again and see what we see, and even what we don't yet see, over and over again, and not become so discouraged that we just give up. We continue our examination with love, hopefully, and compassion and patience toward ourselves. And maybe sometimes we don't, but we keep going. We keep trying. We keep sitting down and getting up again. We're not hooked to the idea that we can change all of our habitual thinking and all of our conditioning. This is a gradual process takes time, but we're getting better at noticing. One time years ago, after Mary Ellen had given a talk here in the Zendo, I asked her what enlightenment is, and her response was, being aware of awareness. So let's take a look at these 10 ox herding pictures over time. Let's study them together then maybe we'll want to attach one or more of them on a wall or near a cushion or on the fridge or on a mirror. And we can use this wisdom of our ancestors, not only as a guide on our journey, but as a record of it. Going back and forth again and again, just as the ox herder has led her ox to and from the fields, up and down the mountains, into and out of the valleys. Let the ox herding pictures be our mirror as we continue to become more able to be aware of our own awareness. <laughs>